shave the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! And uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. I mean, they're a really talented football team. I think everybody knows that. Four wide receivers. Pressure steps up. Marshall wants to run again. Cuts down the middle of the field. All alone. Touchdown, Warriors! What a cut. There are a lot of great high school sports programs in our state of Michigan. I don't think there's one that's better than the University Liggett Girls Hockey Program. And tonight on their senior night, we get a chance to highlight them as they welcome in Northville. Glad to have you from University Liggett High School and a treat for us tonight to cover an outstanding girls hockey program. Tom Cavanaugh, Evan Stockton, alongside the rest of our great crew. Simply, Tom, what's going on here? Why is University Liggett so good at girls hockey? They're dominant because they got three seniors, sorry, eight seniors that absolutely dominate and three freshmen with 47 total points and they got a goaltender that nobody can stop. Uh, Liggett's 15-0-2. They're an incredible team and they're looking to continue to dominate and maybe get a fourth state championship in a row. We already know they're knocking on the door right now. It's pretty remarkable how many state championships they've won in a row. Just a little refresher for you, and we'll talk about this throughout the broadcast tonight. Girls hockey in Michigan is not an MHSA-sanctioned sport, frankly, because they're just not as many schools playing the sport, but very high-level hockey, specifically for University Liggett, who has played good team after good team. Got another good one tonight in Northville. Who's the name or two specifically we should know about for them tonight, Tom? Captain Reagan Johnson. Uh, she's got 20 goals on the year. She's the heart and soul, and she's going to drive the puck home. If Northville's going to want to win this game, game against one of the best teams, as you said, in the entire state, uh, Reagan Johnson's they're going to need to lean on her. Kind of feels like we know a lot about certain programs and certain sports in Michigan, but tonight you get a shot to learn about maybe the very best, University Liggett, and we are excited to cover that. We keep getting you ready for puck drop between University Liggett and Northville. Girls hockey on a Friday night, and it starts in just a little bit. shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! What's going on prep fans here pregame before University of Liggett takes on Northville. We're alongside senior defenseman Allie Roth. Allie, uh, just kind of talk a little bit about how this season's been going. You guys are 15-0-2. It's been a great mm -hmm. season. Uh, you're taking on Northville tonight on senior night. Tell us kind of, you know, how the season's been. What has made you guys so successful? 15 wins, no losses this year. I mean, this year we have a lot of, like, good goal scorers, and we have a really solid defense, especially our goalies, Brooklyn and Madeline. They've really held us down in the back. Um, with our new coach, I mean, like, they've been pushing us really hard. We've been, I don't know, practices have been more, like, up and, like, more intensive than before. So I think we've been working hard, and, we just have the mindset, you know, we want a four-peat. We just want to, like, keep our undefeated streak going. So that's just keeping us going. Yeah, and, got, sorry, yeah. got to look for that four-peat as seniors. <laughs> sorry, you mentioned Casey LaFrance, your head coach. This is her first year coaching the program. Mm -hmm. What kind of coaching style has she brought to your group and uh, kind of help excel what you guys have been doing the last three or four years? Mm -hmm. I mean, she's definitely been pushing us. I think that's really the main thing. And then she's just trying to see our full potential. I mean, she's been moving people around different positions, trying to see what works. And, you know, we've been playing around with, like, power play and penalty kill, just seeing who plays, like, best where. So I think that's really good. I mean, we're finally, like, kind of getting the hang of things, like seeing who we play best with, so. I, you can't ignore. I mean, you guys, the seniors, have been playing well, but 47 total points among all four of your freshmen, or three of your freshmen, sorry. Yeah. It's been incredible. Can you talk a little bit about how those young players, as a senior, it's got to feel good seeing uh, the young pro, uh, part of that program starting to thrive going into uh, your last uh, final games here? Yeah, I mean, it feels really good. I mean, it just makes me feel like the program's going to keep going even after we graduate. So when my class came, like, that's when we started, like, the state championship winnings. They were, like, I mean, our team's always been, like, the highest of the league, but I just think, like, the past four years have been, like, really solid. So just having the freshmen, like, being a strong part of the team, like, it's just, it's awesome. I'm excited to see, like, where the season takes us, like, next year and the year after. And I think even the first goal scored this year was by a freshman, so... Right. 
They're amazing. I mean, not I surprising at all. Yeah, you guys yeah. are. I mean, from top to bottom, you guys are a full team. Yeah. Now, focusing on tonight, senior night, we're honoring a lot of different girls tonight. But uh, taking on this Northfield team, uh, do you have any other mindset that's different from every single game? Because you guys seem to just roll through your opponents. I mean, what's the mindset tonight going in on senior night, where you're honoring a lot of different people? Mm -hmm. So. I mean, tonight we still want to play hard and play our best and try to have the best possible outcome of the game. But we're also just trying to have fun, I mean, enjoy it together. I mean, these girls, like, especially the seniors, we've all been playing together since we were little kids, like 10 and under. So I think we're just trying to, like, make the best of it and, like, I don't know, just play together and have fun. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Allie, thank you so very much. Thank you. Guys, senior defenseman Allie Roth, pregame here at Francis McCann Arena before University of Liggett on senior night takes on Northwood here from the prep. Thank you. Hello, my name is Trinity Lee and I am a Liggett graduate class of 2021. I was a recipient of the Liggett Merit Scholarship. I plan on pursuing a medical degree after graduating from Yale. That has always been my dream ever since I was a little kid and having spent my high school years at Liggett, I felt that having those really amazing science and math classes and even the language and writing classes, they've all have come together so beautifully to help prepare me for my undergraduate college life, but also has made me such a well-rounded person for medical school. Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Come sing in a musical. Come play on a team. Come be a team manager. Come win a state championship. Come be a part of something great here at University of Liggett School. Please contact me or a member of our outstanding admissions team to set up a tour and apply today. Go Knights! Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Lowering the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McKinley scores! It's not every day you get to highlight truly the best in something. Today, we get to highlight truly the best girls high school hockey program in Michigan, University of Liggett hosting Northville on their senior day. Evan Stockton, Tom Cavanaugh, alongside the rest of our outstanding crew with the prep. Glad you're making a little time for us on this Friday, late afternoon into the early evening. You know, it's so darn warm in Michigan today. Tom, maybe there's some people who are watching this game outside on the porch. Seriously, my car said it was 65 degrees when I walked in. It was 60. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I stepped out of here and I had to unzip my jacket, take my sweatshirt off. It was incredible. <laughs> but we're not complaining. That is Michigan weather, though. There is a uh, certain chill that you get when you walk into this gorgeous facility, by the way, University of Liggett, as we see Northville being introduced in front of us. Northville and the black and the orange with the familiar Northville Mustangs logo on the right shoulder and a logo in the middle of the jersey that is reminiscent of those old school Calgary Flame jerseys, Tom. You remember those? A little bit, yeah. It, just the front profile, it looks a lot better. I, I, I like their old school logo a lot, that Bronco side view, but these are nice for a hockey sweater. Goalie tonight for Northville will be Madeline Hexter. 
Hexter skating to the middle of the blue line, being introduced. And now we'll get a few introductions for the University Legged Girls. The lights are out. It is a full-scale production. How about this? They had their senior day ceremonies just about 20 minutes ago. And now the introductions continue for University of Liggett. Tom, you already talked just a few minutes ago about some of the talented players on this team. You mentioned Sophie Ancona, number 10, who has 45 points so far this season. Why don't we give a little love to the net minder we'll see tonight for University of Liggett. Number 70, Brooklyn Peschel, a senior who's been part of this program for the last few years as they've been doing all this winning. She's been incredible this year. Eight wins, just one tie, but 11 goals al allowed this year through those nine games. That's the big number. 11 goals in nine games uh, as she's been really stopping the puck and being a wall in front for these ladies of Liggett. Uh, I'm really excited to see how she goes tonight against this Northfield team. By the way, Brooklyn was second team All-State last year. And when she's not playing hockey, she also plays lacrosse and softball as well. There truly is no such thing as downtime. <laughs> They're about to play the national anthem, so we'll hit one more break here at University Leggett before we get puck drop. Between the Knights and the Mustangs, hang tight. Liggett prepares students for college in a number of ways. We are really interested in helping students find the right fit, understanding that the right fit is not a single school. Fit looks different for every kid. We really look at finding out what a student wants, what makes them tick. Are there things that they really love to do? Are there places that they really want to be? Are there things that they really want to study? Are there athletic needs, spiritual needs? So we really work to help students and families identify what those schools are. And I had a family in my my office this morning who we were meeting about their their son who's a junior but they have a daughter who just finished her first year and I asked about her and they said she you know she had a great first year and that's not a school that we had ever even heard of before we had spoken with you my hope for every student that goes on to college is that they will find a place where they can grow and learn for the next four years and that they will feel well prepared to be in that place I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. the shoulder. Swing and a miss. McGinley scores! There they are, the three-time defending state champs and about to make a run for a fourth. University Liggett against Northville on a Friday late afternoon into the evening. Okay, here are some of the names for University Lickett to focus on. We've talked about Sophie Ancona, who's fantastic. One of the best girls hockey players in the state of Michigan. Al Quinlan, Anna Claire Dopke, among the talented players and the experienced faces on a roster that has done nothing but win over the last handful of years. Already heard from Allie Roth, who talked to Tom Cavanaugh before this broadcast tonight. Allie's not playing tonight because she's injured, but we're expecting her back before the playoffs start for University Lickett. Sullivan Estes, who also goes by Sully, one of the better players on that University Liggett team. And there's Brooklyn Peschel, the netminder, who we've talked about, Tom. I know you're excited to watch her today. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And she's taking on a Northfield team that has some solid players. We talked about Reagan Johnson and her 20 goals this season for the Northfield Broncos. Sorry, the Mustangs, excuse me. You're good. <laughs> you saw the, uh, the logo on the right shoulder. That right. was the old school Denver Broncos. All right, let's play some hockey. University Liggett in Northville. The best girls program in the state. In the white, in Northville, in the black and orange. University Liggett into the offensive zone. It took them less than 20 seconds to score. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. Top corner into the right corner. There's Sophie to score the first one. 22 seconds exactly 
into the hockey game. Make that 31 goals for Sophie right there. That puck moving right down Main Street across the blue line. Nobody was stopping her as she passed one more defender. I mean, th this is a well-oiled machine we're watching right now, Evan. This team hasn't lost all year long, and we're seeing why. I mean, look at that. Right by her and then flips it right past top side. Nice shot right there from Sophie. You know, Tom, what I've always wondered watching shots like that in hockey is as a goalie, can you feel bad about the puck going in on that? There's not much you can do. No, there's not much room for that puck to go through, and it finds a way. I mean, that's just a credit to your goal scorer right there. Here's Sully Estes into the offensive zone, losing the puck, and it's played to the near side. Addison Royston gets it out for Northville. Puck goes down the ice. Friendly reminder for you as well in Michigan high school hockey in case you're watching today and, and wondering potentially going forward. You can change on an icing. It's not the collegiate and NHL rules where if you ice the puck, you can't change. So yep. sometimes if teams are tired, Tom, and they just want to get the puck down the ice, they'll, uh, they'll ice the puck so they can change. Leggett coming ahead, and Kona, who just scored the goal, behind the rush on this play. Left side pass, Dobke, I believe, hit the post. Right point try goes wide. Hexter saw it sail to her right. Hexter, a sophomore goalie for Northville. Peschel, the senior for Leggett, hasn't faced a shot yet. Now Calla passes it along. The board's back to the right side of the blue for a shot that got blocked on its way to the net. And Northville trying their darndest to get the puck out to center ice, but they can't. That's a turnover. Liggett battling hard, a left side shot, and Hexter made a nice save. Swept out to the blue line and kept in. And another shot saved by Hexter. A couple of good stops in the last 10 seconds or so. Yeah, she's taking a flurry of shots right now. Extended run for Hexter. Look, it keeps it in along those boards. Played near the high slot. Now back to the middle of the blue line. Another drive that was blocked. That puck is still loose. Northfield sweeps it to safety, left side of the ice. And out to center it comes. They're getting a uh, desperately needed change. Look, it was just in their zone for about 90 seconds. That was a good job from the Mustangs to be able to clear that out, and not too many second chance shots right there. There was those original shots from the blue line, but they did a good job of stopping those second chance rebounds. It's a two on two for Liggett, back into the offensive zone, and Hexter sprawling makes another nice save. She's gonna have to play well tonight. We know the type of shots that Liggett's gonna bring every single period. Puck possession has been paramount and pivotal so far in this game for Liggett. A knuckleballing shot from the blue line, saved by Hexter. Who was that guy in uh, Mighty Ducks, the knuckle puck? That was a knuckle puck <laughs> shot right there. Watch this again. She just had to sit on that one, just kind of stop that. And we know this puck for these first couple of minutes is going to be dominated by Liggett. Northville's got to find a way to just be able to get that puck down and get on the four check. Right point shot blocked. There she is again, and Kona sending it wide. Just looks a little different coming off of her stick. Sophie after it again. Scored that goal for Liggett 22 seconds into the hockey game. Say Liggett offense, Tom, as you were talking a little bit earlier. Uh, they can score, and they can score in bunches, and they can score real quick like they're doing right now. And Kona, shot, save, Hexter, swallowed the five hole that time. There's a really jarring stat between these two teams, Evan. Liggett is a plus 54 goal differential, whereas Northville is a minus 71 goal differential. And that's just kind of uh, how these two seasons have gone and the difference in goal production between these two squads. So far tonight, six shots already for Liggett. Just the one goal, though. Hexter has looked good in between the pipes. Maybe a sophomore, maybe a youngster. Not scared early though, Tom. She's staring down Liggett and playing pretty well. She's doing a great job. I mean, as you said, six, seven shots already on her. No second chances though. She's done a great job of grabbing that whistle and setting up a face-off. 
It's a face-off win for Liggett. Anna Claire Dopke with the puck in the corner. Right side of the blue line. Another big shot coming. That's a block. And back to the left side of the blue line. Dragovic shoots. Somehow, that didn't go in. A seen Irish shot that nearly found its way home. Leggett holds the zone. Flops it wide. Dopke to the far corner. Along the ice, back to the right side of the blue line. Another knuckle puck that saved and swept to neutral ice. There we go. Northfield playing some good defense right now. Able to get that out. I, I Got to see more of that right now. Liggett is completely dominating uh, the time of possession with the puck. And also as well, Tom, uh, just a fact of the matter is that there is a deeper bench for Liggett when you look at their bench compared to Northfield. There's frankly just more bodies on that Liggett bench, so not only is the talent a problem, but the depth for the team in white, red, and blue is a problem as well. Yeah, when you're staring up and down that roster sheet, there's just five or six more names, and you can see it's just a bigger roster than on that uh, Northfield side. So you're right, there's fresher legs out there every period. Kylie Marks, the junior for Northville, with the pass to the near side of the ice. Taken away by Quinlan. Freel again. Fine skating into the offensive zone. A shot, save, Hexter. Looked like a two-on-one was brewing, Tom, but she took the shot, and Maddie Hexter again makes a nice save. As she beat by that one defender at the last second, looked like she had a good shot right there. Uh, Quinlan, 19 points on the year, eight total goals. Uh, we're likely to see her get in the scoring sheet as well sometime today. Elle grew up in a hockey family. All her siblings, all her parents grew up playing the sport. Oh, boy. Good break there for Norfield. That was a loose puck, but the official lost sight of the puck. And Blue played dead. And we haven't seen many blocks in front. Everything that Liggett's taken, all their shots from the blue line, like that one right there from Estes, untouched. Nobody's getting in front and blocking up that puck and allowing it to get to Hexter every single time. Liggett scored 22 seconds in. And Kona scored, they haven't scored since. Trying to get goal number two. Estes shot high. Hangs off the boards. Perched near that left post dangerously, but swept aside by Northville. Leggett's got it again. Quinlan passing back to Sully Estes. Rips a pass to the right side of the ice. Puck movement for Leggett. Back to Estes. Slap shot off the crossbar. You can hear that one, Evan. Jeez. You know, usually, Tom, when a shot like that squirts through everybody and goes off the post, you call it a seen eye wrist shot. There are not many seen eye slap shots that nearly <laughs> find their yeah. way home, you know? Really? More great skating from Liggett. Estes, shot, Hexter save, guarding the right post. Got to tip your cap to the way Hexter has played in this first period, Tom, because she has been badgered by shots. And another one could be coming. And Kona, saucer pass right side, missed a couple of Liggett skaters over there. They've got it again in the offensive zone. Dragovich wrist shot, and a nice glove save by Hexter. How about it? You're right. Hexter has been playing incredible so far. It's just the copious amount of shots that she's been seeing so far in these first couple of minutes. Uh, the defensive side for Northville right now, not able to, as I said before, block up any shots, but sticks in lanes, trying to find a way to fumble that puck and not let Liggett have a clear shot. Oh, there you go. That was not a clear shot. Dragovich from the left point with the body perched in front. We'll have to check the replay to see if Smiatas got a piece. Judging by the reaction, it's Luisa Dragovich's goal and a 2 0 Liggett lead. Take another look at this right here, just right next to the boards. It might have gotten a piece of Sniataz right there, but I like that goal right there, giving it to Dragovic. She sniped that thing. You know, we've sung the praises, and rightfully so, of Hexter in between the pipes for Northville tonight. I mean, both goals, you'd figure, not her fault, the first gorgeous shot from Ancona, and that one from Dragovic. I'm not sure Madeline even saw the puck until it was behind her. <laughs> yeah, those are two shots from uh, a team that's won three straight state titles. Ancona again. 
Drop pass. Slot shot. Blocked. Leggett still got it. Tough angle shot. Hexter makes the save and sprawls and freezes the puck. She's giving it everything she can right now. I mean, as you said, those two goals were very tough shots to stop, but everything else, I mean, these short angle shots right here on the corner doing a great job of closing off both posts very well, but it's everything kind of in the middle and those seeing eye shots around the shoulders and up near the eyes that are sneaking through. Well, it's Avery Welsh who took the last shot for Leggett. This slap shot from Estes goes wide. Number nine for Liggett. Her full name is Sullivan, but she goes by Sully. Gorgeous move to the front. Hexter again making the save. And the net's off its moorings as bodies were colliding into the netminder. Yeah, I see that not too often in ladies hockey. I mean, there's no contact, but when you're barreling towards the goal like that, you know, there's gonna be contact right there. I love that shot. An even better save though from Hexter. They gotta bring the face off to center. The puck came off in that contact with the goalie. So, Quinlan to take the face off for Liggett. L. Quinlan, who had three points against Gross Point North on Wednesday. Finishing up her fourth and final season at Liggett. Tom, it was cool for us to watch the ceremony before the game, honoring the members of this program for the last four years who uh, are perfect. They're three for three in state championships so far. <laughs> Must be nice going to high school like that. <laughs> Estes, big drive. Hexter saw it the whole way. That's a nice save. Beautiful job right there. That one might have uh, ridden a little high and wide of the net, but still love to see the puck get in her, uh, in her glove like that. She saw it all the way, as you said, Estes. Huge slap shot. And those are the type of shots we've been seeing from Liggett all day long. There's some velocity on those clappers right there. Also to mention too, Evan, I mean, we talked earlier that, uh, today about how this is a full team top to bottom. Both goals scored today, one from a senior and one from a freshman, so. You know, they just don't pay Tom enough. <laughs> they just don't pay him enough. I'll, I'll sideline as your agent, buddy. I'll move my, it's all good. This puck's still back in Northville's defensive zone. Coming up on six and a half to go in the first period. Leggett looking for another one. Good move to the slot by Ancona, but the pass was mishandled. Ancona's got it again. Slot shot, Hexter. Nice save again with the right blocker. Alcala. Point try. Hexter again. Follow. Loose. In the slot. Now steered back to Ancona. Dragovic shot. Blocked. Slap shot. Kick save. Hexter. Come on. Madeline Hexter, the I mean, sophomore, playing goalie for Northville, looks great. It's like a firing range right now from Liggett. But Northville doing a good job of not allowing that, that, that rebound. Nothing has been clean for a second chance shot from Liggett, which has been incredible. Free puck at center found by Liggett, and they lose the puck. And Northville overskates the puck. And it's coming back into the offensive zone for Liggett, where they have set up shop in this first period. Back to Dragovich, who scored the second goal. All the way back to Alcala from the blue line. A shot saved by Hexter. Puck loose behind the net. Careening its way all the way to the far side of the ice and out as Liggett changing the defensive pair behind the play. Off the bench and with speed. Mitri shoots and blocked. 20 shots in this period for Liggett. 18 saves for Hexter and the two goals for Liggett. Northville with numbers, a shot saved by Peschel. And the cheer you hear in the background is the fact that Brooklyn just made her first save on senior night. Although I'm not sure if we can call it senior night at 546. <laughs> senior afternoon. There you go. Senior rush hour. Bingo. Again, I'm telling you, they just don't pay Tom enough. <laughs> You know? Creeping toward four minutes to go, first period. And Kona and Dragovich have scored for Liggett. This shot goes wide. To the left of the goalie, Hexter for Northville. Quinlan. 
Cradling backhand, turning back forehand. Cross ice pass was tipped and sent to center by Northville. Mitri into the offensive zone. Room for Welsh. Sticked aside easily by Hexter. Kona off the bench with a vengeance, tipped it forward in that corner. Now they get it back to her in front. She is a load. Her second today and her 32nd of the season. Wow. I mean, she was waiting for it on the doorstep right there, but <laughs> the type of speed that came off that stick right there, holy cow, man. I mean, she just came on the ice after that shift, immediately poke checked the puck away, set herself up for success right on the doorstep in the crease, and she just bangs it home. I mean, that is textbook hockey. Perfect play right there, and that's why she's the point leader for this team. She puts herself in the best situations to score the puck. Tom, you were mentioning some of the fun with numbers for this Liggett hockey team earlier, and I got some more fun numbers for Ancona to run by you here in a second. For now, we watch Quinlan drop it back for another shot that goes wide. So Ancona, who just scored her second goal, that's now 20 points in the last five games and 15 goals. We got another goal for Liggett. They're coming fast and furious. There's the smiles we want to see on senior night. Luisa Dragovic, her second goal today, her 15th of the season, and it's 4 nothing. 20 goals in five games is incredible. But I mean, even now, Dra Dragovic is starting to climb those numbers. She's got two goals on the day. And that's a freshman with 20 points this season. Uh, four players with 20 or more points for this Liggett team. Uh, no wonder they're cruising out of their way for another state title. And Kona twirling back in the offensive zone. Dopke dropped it back. Here comes the Liggett passing and a tough angle shot. Save. to the blue line it comes. Passing to Quinlan. Hexter got a piece. Played back in front and sent away. Emily Gallen right there swinging that puck out of there was on the doorstep to score again with nobody in front. And Kona. Cross ice pass tipped by a Northville stick as it tried to reach Quinlan. L still got it. Passing to the right. Right side blue line shot saved by Hexter. And she freezes for a face off. 2.19 to go in the first. The uh, biggest difference I'm seeing right now, Evan, is just speed and physicality. Uh, a few of these shots have been faster uh, than we've seen from, from Liggett, but just the ability to pick that puck up and really move down the ice has been the big difference. And, and, and Kona, as well as Quinlan and many others, they're getting it deep in their own zone and they're moving it. It's a one nothing game with about Nine minutes to go in the first period, and then Liggett, the dam broke, and Kona, Dragovic added goals each. And with all the shots that were being fired on Madeline Hexter in those first two minutes, Tom, you kind of figured that some were going to start finding the back of the net. And for Liggett, Brooklyn Peschel has looked like that much of the game. She's only faced one shot so far. Yeah, she's had it easy so far. The Pucks have not been down on that Northville, or, sorry, in that Northville zone trying to score some goals. Northville gets it out to center where Alcala tracks it down. Into the defensive zone for Northville. As here's Reagan Johnson with those 20 goals we told you about earlier. She lost the puck though. Looking behind the net with Mitri. Turning back forehand. Pass in front. Tracked down by Liggett. Smyataz shoots it wide. Lee plays it back in front, save made Hexter. A couple more cracks at that thing. Slot shot coming, got blocked by Johnson. Alcala again, passing the space on the right side. Shot tipped, roll into the corner, loose along the end line, now swept back to the blue line. Smyatas, nice find of space and Lee on the near side. Then Northville took it away. Liggett holds the zone with Alcala. 
and out to neutralize. Under 50 seconds to go in a first period that has seen Liggett score four times. Reagan Johnson caught Liggett on a change. Here she comes, left side shot, goes wide. All of a sudden, Liggett penned in their own defensive zone for the first time all night, and they get it out. They catch Northville on a change. Racing ahead with speed. In front, Hexter, what a save. Wow. Golden opportunity there for Quinlan, and Hexter made the save. My goodness, she has been tested in this period. That ends the first. Northville saw Liggett score four times, but they also saw Hexter and Nett play really, really well. And the best girls hockey team in Michigan give you a big reason why so many are so scared of them. That's 4 nothing after 15 minutes of hockey. Hi, I'm Nick Deponio, and this is HVAC. Liggett to me has just an extraordinary environment that you can't find at any other school. Just the one-on-one -on -one time with your teachers and the environment focusing on you and benefits to your learning, that's really important to me because school is about learning and I want to come here every single day and I'm excited to come. Back at Liggett High School, where the best girls hockey team in Michigan is looking the part again. Up 4 nothing after the first period. Glad to welcome you back rinkside. Literally like two rows above the ice. Evan Stockton alongside Dr. Lathan Williams. Yes. Please tell all the uh, fine folks watching and listening your official title here at Liggett. I am the assistant head of school over athletics and ancillary programs. So essentially, um, I'm an athletic director, but I, um, I get to join our senior leadership team and. Um, uh, engage our staff and uh, students and community members in um, educational athletics, if you will. So, so uh, we have the opportunity here to let you know a, a little bit of good news. We talked to Coach LaFrance before the game, and we asked her, why is this hockey program so good? And she said, because you're leading the way. You're leading the wow. shop. You're setting the example. So wow. I, th I, think she's, uh, I think she's trying to get a little kudos over there, <laughs> trying to buddy up. She doesn't need that. She, um, she's been a phenomenal find and add to our athletics department, uh, and specifically our girls' hockey program. Um, she really leads with um, discipline, with um, thoughtfulness in how she structures her practices, um, and accountability. Um, and so she's one of our great, great uh, culture builders here um, at University of Liggett. And uh, I'm thankful to have her and her husband, Adam, on, on, on our team. Nice save by Hexter for Northville. And Kona talking to Hexter. Sophie's already seen her score a couple of times. You know, we, 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 Doctor, we can't really talk enough about the fact that Coach LaFrance has to walk in with her husband as a first-year head coach with a program that had already won three straight state championship. I mean, yeah. what kind of inherent pressure is that, you, you know, know, to keep this program going? You know, she's uh, she's got D1 uh, hockey pedigree, right? And so she's she's coached on, on, on travel ranks. She, she's she been around a lot of great, great hockey, not only as a coach, but also as a player. So she's the type of personality that can come in and, and take a achieving team such as our Knights and take them to the next level. Not a lot of people can do that. So it's, uh, it's truly a skill to take skilled skaters and help them get better and maximize their uh, potential. 
Here's one of those skilled skaters, Estes, who falls down. They didn't call a penalty. May have been a trip. This goes down the ice for an icing. Doctor, there's obviously a lot of great athletic programs at University of Leggett, but what specific pride do you, hmm. the faculty, the entire student body take in, in these ladies on the ice tonight? Oh man, it's, they are dynastic in what they're doing. This doesn't come around too often. Uh, in fact, this is uh, part and parcel to the reason that you guys are here, wanting to be able to highlight this group. Uh, we have some, some phenomenal seniors graduating. Um, and we wanted to make sure they got the coverage they deserve because what they're doing and have done is incredible. It doesn't happen too often. Not only have they won three straight state championships um, going for a fourth, but they haven't lost. Yeah. This is their fourth, fourth season straight without one loss. Um, and uh, just remarkable. And there's been close games. There's been some close calls, and these girls dug it out. And um, it really is a testament to their resolve. So uh, I definitely wanted them to have – uh, some memories live on YouTube uh, and to be attached to the prep and the amazing coverage you guys provide. Well, we appreciate that. Now you're buttering us up, so thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate that. We actually have a penalty here on Liggett. Pelamitri is sitting in the box. She knows what she did. See that smile? And now she's, oh, no, she's got her head in her oh, hands. Oh, Bella, Bella. Oh, uh, she knows. She's good. She's, uh, she's a headsy senior for us, really kind of anchoring our defense. And... Um, Really, she does a really, really good job, not only on the ice, but in the classroom. Um, congrats to Bella, just got accepted to University of Michigan. Wow. Um, I don't know what her, her decision is going to be. I think that was a big, big, uh, you know, school for her. I think maybe first choice. We'll see what she decides, her and her family. But uh, I know she was waiting for that news, so I'm excited, excited for her. So you just brought up Bella and some of the great things she has done. We've talked about Sophie and the two goals she scored sure. already tonight. Uh, you have had a bird's eye view at this. Sophie and Kona, when they talk about great Liggett athletes over the last couple of decades, she's got to fall high in the pecking order, I She think. does. She does. Sophie's up there amongst the best. And she, she comes from great stock, right? She's really great soccer player. Um, she's got a great great family of athletes um, that have come through Liggett. Um, but what what sticks out most to me about Sophie, outside of her athletic prowess, is her ability to battle back. She's had a, two ACL injuries in her high school experience. And many student athletes, that that shoots down your confidence, that strike, that's a blow to the ego. People quit sports, um, they change sports. Uh, for her to stick to what she knows, lead through adversity, even last year, when she was a captain on last year's team, lead the team through that without impacting anything like tangibly on the ice, but all, all the intangibles that go into team sports, and then to be bouncing back this year and leading a fresh group of young, uh, young spry hockey players and uh, aligning herself back with her, her peers, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome to see. Still haven't gotten a goal yet in this second period. Liggett saw Dragovich and Ancona each score twice in that first period. Shot from the left side of the blue line blocked, but right to Quinlan and her shot knuckleballs its way right right. Liggett still holding the puck in the offensive zone. Quinlan shoots and that rises high and out of play. When we look at the rest of the roster, Doctor, what other seniors need to get a little love here as we sure. celebrate this great program on their senior night? Well, I won't, uh, I won't limit it. I'll, I'll talk about all of them. <laughs> you know? uh, L. Quinlan, phenomenal, phenomenal athlete, graceful on the ice, uh, another really, really, really good student. Um, Allie Roth, who's not playing, you guys interviewed her. She's another consummate leader. Every sport she plays, she seems to find herself in a captaincy in a leadership role, uh, she's someone that uh, a lot of people lean on. Um, Sully Estes, another one of the best athletes uh, in the school. Um, and she's, uh, I think she's the, the glue, I would say, of University League girls hockey. She does a lot of the little things well um, that may not always be scoring, but it's the setup, the 50-50 the pucks, she gets there. Um, really might be the heart and soul of uh, this 3 p team. Um, then we have um, also Anna Claire Dopke, affectionately we call her AC. 
Okay. And she is tough as nails um, on and off the ice. She um, is also one of those leaders. Another girl that's been a part of this program from start to finish. Her family is very connected in the community and to look at hockey. She's had sisters come through. Um, so, I mean, you you cannot go wrong with this group. Um, and we talked about Bella. Love Bella to death. Here comes Northville ahead with a nice play by one of the players that the doctor's been talking about, Sully Estes, coming into the slot with a backhand that is saved, and it is frozen for another faceoff. So she she likes Sully, right? Not Sullivan. She goes by Sully. Okay. Yes. Yes. All I, right. I learned that too. I mean, I, I've always called her Sully, but you never know. Sometimes, like on senior banners and you know special uh, documents, they might go by the government name. Yeah. And so I specifically asked uh, one of the other captains, because I didn't want to ask her. <laughs> I said, does she go by Sully or Sullivan? What's her <laughs> preference on the senior banners? And they were like, Sully, <laughs> in all go. caps. So yeah, Sully's her preference. I got to ask you, too. Sure. This rink is outstanding. How old is this rink? Ooh, uh, great, great question. I don't even have that, that answer on the, 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 the top of my brain. But um, when I was a student here, it's been over 20 years ago. The rink was here. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to say the rink dates back to early 2000s, if not late 90s. Um, and, uh, you know, just a great, great uh, pedigree of hockey that's been played, not only for our Knights, girls and boys, but uh, for the community. You know, Gross Point Bulldogs and some other groups uh, that have come and uh, inhabited this space. Save made, rebound loose, and swept out to center. Nice try there by Sophia Secco from the slot. And we have a whistle with Chalt's play. Just about nine and a half minutes remaining second period. Doctor, appreciate your time, and before we we'll let you go, one more time. Sure. As we highlight this outstanding program of all the sports in high school, at the high school level in Michigan, these girls haven't lost in four years. This may be the best program, any sport, any level. What do you want people to know about this program that maybe hasn't been highlighted the last yeah. few years during all this winning? Yeah, I want these girls. I want I want the public to know that these girls work hard. It's not a it's not happenstance that you win three straight state championships and don't lose a game in that span. Going for four. That takes determination, dedication, hard work. These girls put in a lot of hours, early morning, uh, you know, off ice work, um, a lot of power skating, puck work. Uh, they skate with some of the best, um, you know, trainers um, in the area. These girls put in work on and off the ice, and it shows up in how they approach the game. And not only that, but these girls beyond hockey players are great students. Many of them lead their classes in, um, you know, educationally in GPA. So there's a lot of high achievers all, all around on this team. And um, I think that's been a really, really important ingredient to their success. And we're excited to watch them the rest of this game. Excited to see where the rest of the season takes them. Welsh the shot, extra the save. Dr. Williams, appreciate your time. Thanks my pleasure, for having us my here. pleasure. Thanks for having me. 4 nothing lead for Liggett, coming up on the halfway mark of this second period. Clock frozen, 8.57 to go. There she is, Sophie Ancona. Two more goals tonight, 32 on the season. Dragovic just took that shot from the right side of the blue line. She also has two goals tonight. Pass tip to the slot and held in by Liggett. This could be an opportunity from the right side. Save made, rebound loose. Quinlan missed the net. Follow up try, no. And Kona sends it wide. A flurry of action for Liggett in the last 10 seconds or so. And Kona again. Shot save, Hexter. Got down in the butterfly to make that stop. Line backhand held in by Dragovich as Northfield couldn't clear the zone. Look at Ancona spinning around. That was pretty. Another spin behind the net for Quinlan. They're hitting the circle button at Liggett. Still working in the offensive zone. Tipped aside by Northfield. They just cannot clear the zone. Passing. Quinlan shot. 
Hexter save on the whistle. Once again, I mean, I step away for a few minutes and it's the same <laughs> game, man. Hexter's continuing to play so well in goal. I, I know there's a four spot up there for Liggett right now, but you just have to understand that coming out of that first period, it was 25 to one in shots. 25 shots and you save 21 out of those. Uh, you can't ask for much better. That's incredible hockey, way to play in goal for Madeline. And you can just see from Liggett and their stick handling and speed, they're just taking that puck away at will. The well-oiled Liggett machine has been on display since the moment we dropped the puck tonight. Mm -hmm. Sully Estes back into the defensive zone. Dr. Williams was just telling about all the great things that Sully does. Johnson for Northville got rid of a couple. Long strides for number 24. Morgan into the offensive zone. Has still got the puck. It goes wide. Now Estes for Liggett. Couldn't clear the zone. Northville keeps it in. Tracking it down. Playing it in front. That puck is loose. And steered to the far side of the ice. Seco for Liggett. Ahead. They come. Two on one developing. Pass left side just too far for its intended target. Johnson tracks it down for Northville. We were talking earlier about the fact that there's just more bodies for Liggett on the roster. So you're seeing longer shifts, which are leading to opportunities like this. Estes shot, Hexter save. She had Walsh right on the left side for a two-on-one chance. That's another two-on-one that was just left alone for a solo shot. There's a goal for Liggett. Curling around the net and into the back of the net it goes. Avery Welsh, her 12th of the season. And she finally gets in right there. We just mentioned she was on the opposite side for that two on one, but look at that wraparound shot. Just sneaks it past Hexter's left pad and makes it 5 0. First goal of the second period for Liggett. Avery had three points against Gross Point North on Wednesday. She's now scored in 10 of 18 games this year for Liggett. Dragovich has a couple of those goals for Liggett. She's back to try to grab the puck as Northville four checks, but Dragovich takes it away. Space for Louisa. Coming ahead with speed. Maneuvering by everybody. Into the offensive zone. A backhand goes wide. Ooh, a hit. Bodies colliding. Dragovich back at that blue line holds the puck. Pass it in front. Swept back to the right side of the blue. Leggett coming ahead again. Shot, save, loose, near side. In the high slot, Northville plays it out to center. Tie up right near the red line. Fished free by Northville. Emma Trujillo tried to take the shot. It was altered on its way to the net. Back out to center it comes. Slammed along those boards. Intercepted by Quinlan. Number six in red, white, and blue coming ahead over the blue line. But there's an offside. Stop and play. On that last possession, you had Bellametri coming down, taking a few different shots there for Liggett. They really want to get Bella a goal. Uh, these knights do so bad. She's got seven assists. Those are her total seven points. She's a senior on this team, and tonight is senior night. Love to see Bella uh, get a goal here and get that first before the end of her senior year here. They're going to you know, open up some shots for her down the stretch. Here. Tom, I'm glad you brought that up, right? You know Bella coming to the rink today, wanted a goal today as much as any other game this year, and she'll remember it the rest of her life. And Kona will remember goals like that for a long time. That's another hat trick for one of the best girls high school hockey players in Michigan. Her 33rd of the season. It's like clockwork for her. I mean, that was just a quick shot. Beat past Hexter. And she just went right down the middle once again, took a quick shot, and got it past the pad. 
Sophie Ancona is incredible. And this is our first game being able to watch her, but I am extremely impressed by the se several minutes we've watched her play hockey. Here comes another impressive skater, Estes, on the back end, twirling around the net and spraying some snow as she stops. And Kona occupying the blue line, did hold that puck in as Liggett works it around. And Kona on the backhand behind the net. Quinlan turning back forehand and spraying more snow. Estes banked off the boards. Dopke in the slot. Back to Quinlan as Liggett seeks an opportunity. Estes for Quinlan. Dopke in the near circle, banks it off the boards, and Kona attempting to track it down. Northfield takes it away and gets it out to center. Wonder if Northfield tries to change here. This has been a longer shift for their unit on the ice. Forced to change behind the play. This leads to an on man rush. Dopke for Ligon. Quintland, one more pass, tipped wide. And Kona plays it behind the net. Back to the blue line, and Estes, she loves that slap shot. Jeez. Hexter makes the save. Yeah, shot out of a cannon right there. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, Evan. We have five or six different ladies on this Knights team that can shoot the puck exactly like that. Estes, Anacona, Quinlan, I mean, the, the, the list goes on, but when you have so many different people on the ice at one time that can all create the same sort of shot, it's a nightmare for the opposition. That was just the 41st shot of the night by Liggett. They had 25 in the first and now 16 more in the second. Shout out to the hardest working stat man in the business, Pat Bush, who was off on Wednesday. Decided to join us today. Keyword decided. Uh, look, it's always nice when we can fit in the social calendar, you know? Right. The man is very busy. That tipped off of something high into the air, and they do whistle the play dead on a high stick. That'll stop the clock with 2.22 to go, second period. And there's a situation kind of brewing here for Liggett. They're up six goals, and they feel pretty good about what's going on. But we have to remember, they play a, a CYO a playoff game tomorrow against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. they got to stay prepped for that. So do you kind of back off and put some of your other skaters in? But also, it's senior night, so you want to let your se seniors thrive at the same time. So there's a little bit of a, a dilemma going on here. Yeah, Tom, that's a really good point. It's kind of like when sometimes there's that quirk in the SEC football schedule when they'll play a, a mid-major opponent below the Power Five the week before they play all their yep. rivalry games last week of the year. It is a little bit of an, an interesting conundrum for the head coach for University of Liggett, who we've talked about a few times tonight. First-year head coach Casey LaFrance played college hockey in Hamilton, New York at Colgate, and her uh, top assistant is her husband, Adam who Coach LaFrance assures us, yeah, we live together, we get along real well, no problems. And I believe her too. And there's no surprise her team is this good at both stick handling and uh, skating because they dominate in that. Shot on Hexter, whacking away a bunch of times for Liggett, that puck loose, and Northfield scoops it and brings it out to center. Over the blue line they come, throwing it deep. Estes. Got away from Marks. Now Lee for Liggett. Another odd man rush. Good back check though by Northfield to nullify that play. Bodies careening to the ice. Back to the blue line. Shot wide. Hoping for Caroline Crawl on the other end of that. Played up the boards, out to center. Lee collided with Marks, and a Liggett opportunity nullified by Northfield. Nice defensive play as more bodies go to the ice. Man. 
And a whistle behind the play. It was Emily Gallant for Northville. It's her second time kind of wishing the puck out of that neutral, sorry, out of the slot area right there. Uh, I think Coach LaFrance has that look on her face because her team's going back to the box. They just got too many women on the ice. Yeah, that's the second penalty they've had tonight, and Northville unable to capitalize with it. It's going to be some spillover time into that third period with the penalty as well. Couple of penalties in this period for Liggett, about the only thing that's gone wrong for them. Six goals so far in this game, and Kona just completed the hat trick for Liggett. Avery Welsh has also scored in this second period for this outstanding hockey team we get to watch tonight. The penalty was two minutes for checking, by the way. Friendly reminder in case you're unfamiliar. Not allowed to check in girls hockey. Two seconds and one, and Kona can't get it off, and that will send us to the third. Two more for Liggett in the second, growing the lead from four to six. And after 30 minutes of hockey, six nothing home team at University Liggett High. I'm Nick Deponio, and this is HVAC. Back at University Liggett High School, where today we have the very cool opportunity to profile and feature the best girls high school hockey program in the state of Michigan. Led this year by a new head coach, it's Casey LaFrance. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. As we get ready for this game tonight against Northville, coming in with the playoffs just around the corner, what do we need to know about your team this season? Um, I mean, it's a good group of girls. They're hard workers. Um, they just love the game of hockey. I would ask you what makes this program so good for so many years, but it is kind of tough for you specifically to answer because it's your first year yeah. as the head coach. <laughs> yeah. So walking in as a first-year head coach, what did you very quickly learn about the culture of this high school and why they're so good at hockey? Um, they just truly love being a team, love being at the rink. We got a good group of um, – captains and seniors and just a good culture overall without a good culture um, and good support from the school you know I don't know that the program would be as um, beneficial to the girls that play as it is. What's the athletic culture like at the high school as a whole? Um, well we actually have a newer athletic director he um, I think started a couple months before I did um, and he is a Liggett alum um, Lathan Williams Dr. Lathan Williams, um, and he uh, he just truly cares about the kids, wanting to make sure that um, they have everything they could possibly need to be successful. So it's, it's nice. Turning back to your team, as we prepare to watch them this afternoon into the evening, who are a few names that we need to focus on in this game? Um, so some of our captains, um, Sophia Anacona, or, sorry, Sophie Anacona. It all just kind of rolls off the top. <laughs> I always do that to her. Um, she's a great player, probably one of our top players. Um, L. Uh, Quinlan is also a really good uh, top player for us. Um, we have on defense Sully uh, or Sullivan Estes. Um, she's a, a strong defense for us. And then, um, yeah, I mean, those are probably our top three players right now. And 
Uh, one that's not going to be playing, she's injured, coming back, uh, Allie Roth. She's also a really strong player. But those that's our captains, um, but they're also great off the ice too, just as far as leading the team, being somebody that the girls can lean on and know, like, they'll contact and kind of just get the girls hyped up, ready to go, and kind of lay the law down. What's your specific hockey background? How'd you get to this point in time right now? Um, I, uh, I played AAA hockey here in Metro Detroit growing up. Um, played for Little Caesars, a um, couple national titles, um, silvers, bronze, medals, um, as far as youth goes. And then um, I ended up playing a couple years at Colgate University. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a full ride scholarship there. Um, unfortunately, one too many concussions, wasn't able to finish my hockey career, but that's part of what got me back into coaching. Um, you know, I just felt giving back to the game was a really important part, and if nobody gave back to the game, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at. So that really got me into it. Um, and then I just I took a year off. Um, last year I was coaching – some younger kids and just really missed it my husband uh coaches with me he's my assistant coach now and it was just just to have that dynamic and you know it's something fun we like to do and when uh dr williams called it just seemed like a really good opportunity to get back into it and great team to coach is there anything at this point in the year as your first year as a head coach with your husband coaching alongside you is there anything that has surprised you at this point in the year? Um, as far as coaching with him? Sure. Uh, not really. We, we're pretty cohesive. Um, we definitely uh, get along and kind of, you know, living together, can read each other's body language. So that that's not it. But, um, no, I mean, it's just – it's it's refreshing that the girls, like, you know, we noticed it from the first time we stepped on the ice with this team. Like, the girls genuinely want to be at the rink. It's not like some high school teams where it's like, oh, geez, I got practice night, or oh, geez, I got a game. Like, I'd rather stay home and bake cookies or something like that. Like, they're just – they just love it. They love the culture, the atmosphere. They love being a team. They love working together. So it's – it's yeah, it's refreshing to have a group of girls that all genuinely want to be here. And then the last question for Coach, very open-ended. We're going to set a timer and see how long she goes here. <laughs> what do we need to know about girls' high school hockey in Michigan that maybe some folks don't know because maybe today's their first time ever watching a girls' high school hockey game in Michigan? Um, so they get 25 games um, is the max game count that they can play. Um, they are uh, – Sorry, that's my team no, <laughs> over there being obnoxious. You're good. Um, they get uh, – their season is only five months compared to what travel season is, um, which is about nine months. Um, so it's definitely shortened. Um, but with that, I mean, yeah. I. How do you think you can grow the game? They can grow girls high school hockey in Michigan. Um, well, I think they definitely could grow if they allowed um, the girls to kind of play, uh, like, with the Tier 2 leagues, um, with Maha and stuff like that, um, allowing the players to, like, dual roster throughout the season. Um, by not doing that, it definitely takes away the amount of ice time that they're able to get. Um, you know, they could be practicing with their high school team and that travel team throughout the year, um, whereas, unfortunately, the way it is right now, come – there's like a five-day grace period after the start of the season, October 31st, that they are not allowed to step on the ice with any other team. So with that being the case, um, it definitely diminishes the amount of playing time that they're able to get. We are fortunate enough where we own our own rink, so if we want to skate four or five days a week, we can. We have a great training facility where you know, our personal schedule is – we're on the ice four days a week for um, roughly an hour and a half. Could go longer if I needed to. I just work it out with the rank manager. And then they have off ice for an hour um, with a Sterling Wise, who runs our school's um, off ice program. So we are very fortunate enough to like have all of these opportunities, whereas like you know, other high school teams in the league, they maybe skate three days a week, and that could be including their game for that week if they have a game that week. So just not being able to get the amount of ice um, that some other states are able to get definitely, I guess, 
holds it back a little bit. I think we could do a better job of just working cohesively with all of the different organizations and making sure that we get the opportunity to get the girls on the ice. Because at the end of the day, I mean, that's why we're here. We're here for the girls. So. And now you know the rest of the story. Coach, appreciate your time. Best <laughs> yep, of luck. Thank you. University Liggett and Northfield Girls Hockey coming up in just a few minutes. Hang with us. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 300,000 participants here in Michigan who take part in high school sports. Thank you to Cloverleaf Pizza at 17834 Mac Avenue in Gross Point for supplying our hardworking crew with some delicious pizza tonight. Stop in at Cloverleaf and get your own original Motor City Square pizza today. The best Detroit style pizza around since 1946. Leggett Girls Hockey has won three straight state championships. The quest for a fourth consecutive state championship starts in a matter of days. Tonight we've had the chance to watch them provide a lot of highlights against Northville. Two periods down, one to go. Six, nothing, Liggett. And Tom, the cool thing about watching this game is the players we were excited to watch have done a really good job for Liggett all day. Sophie Ancona, number 10, has scored three times. Luisa Dragovich has a couple of goals. Avery Welsh has a couple of goals. And even the players who haven't scored in this game, Sully Estes, she has had some outstanding moments all day. Sophia Seco has had some opportunities. Al Quidlin, an outstanding skater. When you watch back what University Liggett has done tonight, it's really not hard to see why they win so many hockey games night after night every single time they take that ice. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's usual suspects. Uh, you talked about the laundry list of different players on this team that are able to get it done. And yeah, you can just see by the way that they handle themselves on the ice physically. Uh, you can see right there a beautiful wraparound goal. That's not quite the power in the stick right there from Avery Welsh, but you can see whenever Northville's trying to push that puck down the opposite way and get a goal, it's swiped away quickly. They are muscled off the puck, and Liggett is going down barreling fast the other way, and that, Northville just hasn't been able to keep up with it. And that is not a knock on Northville. That's just how good Liggett's been. And Liggett has done this to so many teams this year that it's all kind of the same common opponent for them because they're, you know, a lot not as fast and not as clean with the puck. And you can see it because girls like Sophie Anacona right there, I mean, she, she makes it look extremely easy when she hops onto a shift and is able to take it away, set herself up, and score her third goal in the first couple periods. Cool thing, too, about what Sophie has done tonight is we've had the chance to highlight her and so many outstanding young women who have been a part of this program. Special thank you to Dr. Lathan Williams, the athletic director here at University of Leggett, for joining us in that second period. Talked about the great stock that Sophie comes from as a family and also how she's torn her ACL earlier in her athletic career. Sophie on that screen, along with a talented, accomplished group of seniors, who, uh, by the way, their job is not done. They're trying to make it four straight state championships here later on in the winter and into the early spring. Wouldn't that be a sweet way to go? Four years of high school and four state championships. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Estes into the zone. That can track down by Anna Claire Dopke. AC, as they call her. AC, one of four siblings who all play hockey. Quinlan in front. Nice save, Hexter. Got to give a little love to Hexter in between the net. Got a great job for Northville tonight. Estes. Shaking free of defenders as Dopke's got it for Liggett. 
In the offensive zone, she shoots from the top of the circle, and it goes wide. This is Liggett on the kill. This is a heck of a penalty kill. Set up shop in the offensive zone. Shot tips wide. Banked off the boards. Northfield can't get it out to center. Turnover. Quinlan walking in and shooting high. She's just missing. Not by much at all. Estes holds the zone. And now it's out to center, but that does kill off the rest of the penalty on Liggett that was being served in the box from the final few moments of the second period. There was a checking penalty in that second period that forced Liggett to kill off that penalty to start the third period. I'd like to see Northfield try to at least come up with a little bit of aggression here offensively. Find a way to dump that puck down, get on the four check, and dig something up in front of the goal. It doesn't take a whole lot to just get a loose puck and maybe get a quick shot on goal, specifically from Reagan Johnson, your 20-goal captain. Yeah, Reagan off the ice right now, so this leads to Liggett coming into the zone with another shot saved by Hexter. And Kona's got it again. To the high slot it comes. Liggett tracks it down. Dragovic shot wide as more bodies hit the ice. Phil can't get it out. Kylie Marks behind her net. Rims it around the boards, and Liggett couldn't hold the zone. Now they'll go back and grab it. Left Miranda Alcala. Puck free near the penalty boxes. Back into Liggett's defensive zone. Quick turnaround, Tom, as you were talking about. Liggett's got to play for a championship tomorrow. They're looking forward to that matchup they have with St. Mary's as well tomorrow. Hexter makes the save, and the rebound loose in the near circle. And that's why I'm not surprised a lot of the seniors, a lot of the highest goal scorers on this team are still out here grinding right now. They want to stay primed and ready for tomorrow's matchup. It's like any good coach will tell you, nothing beats live reps. Right. Dragovic's shot was blocked. Leggett keeps the zone. Seco shoots it well wide. Trujillo gets it out to center ice. Right off the bench, making it happen. Liggett coming ahead with Sully Estes. All alone, backhand save Hexter again. It's loose in front. Oh, it just went wide. Hexter lost her goalie stick, it's loose. Dragovic shoots, Hexter made the save. Who needs a stick? <laughs> that was incredible right there. You know, you're just ranging from post to post right there. Eyes fixed on that puck. Well done from Madeline right there. And when you lose a stick like that, it's just, you know, two free hands. Got to find a way to keep that, that puck in front. And she did a great job once again. I mean, doing well all night. First time in front right there, second chance. And then almost open side of the net, almost finished it off. Defenders made a nice play there to hold that puck up. Face-off win for Liggett. Estes plays it down the boards. Welsh, who has one of the goals tonight, found Estes. Man, it is fun to watch her skate. Right point shot on Hexter. Freezes. Yeah, we saw it from uh, head coach Casey LaFrance's profile page. We showed up earlier. An expert in speed skating and stick handling. You look at that right there. That reflects well on all of the players on her team. Won the first state title in 2014, and three in a row coming into this season, hoping to make it four in a row for the Banner Hockey Program on the girls' side of things at the high school level in Michigan. Did a little journalism, Tom, by the way, and the... Uh, in the break in between second and third period, I asked Dr. Williams when this rink was created. He didn't know. He said it was here when he was a student. Well, he was right. So this University of Liggett program has this beautiful facility. It was actually enclosed and became a permanent rink in 1999. It began as an outdoor rink in the late 60s. Wow. Yep. That's awesome. I didn't I do didn't a lot of tough research. It's on a uh, it's on a plaque, <laughs> literally right behind. Hey, journalism, journalism, man. Yeah, I, I walked by it on the way to the bathroom. 
You retain the information, though. That's the big thing. Well, Tom, you're too kind, my friend, but I really didn't work that hard. <laughs> oh, what a pass. Oh, it just missed Dopke, who was behind the defense, and that's an icing. Oh, man, she knows she it. She wanted to bet. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Anna Claire Dopke. That bench has got bright days ahead of them. There's no doubt about it. Haven't lost in four years. Their record entering today, 15-0-2. There will be challenges up ahead. Last year they beat Gross Point South 3-0 in the Division I State Championship. Here's Dopke, skating left with patience. Now turning back forehand on the right side of the ice. And Kona back for Dopke. She shoots, got blocked. Northfield sweeps it to safety and out of the defensive zone. That'll be an icing. Once again, set in a couple times now tonight. Number 77, Emily Gallen, yeah, blocking up that shot. We said in that first period, every single shot from Liggett was getting through to Hexter. And right now, a few bodies are getting in front of the pucks and not letting Madeline have to make as many saves as she did in those first couple. I mean, 40 saves in the first couple periods. That was incredible. Yeah, Hexter has been great tonight. Sophomore playing goal for Northville. Not easy when you're facing the type of attack that Leggett's got, the skill, the speed, the athleticism, but she definitely deserves a lot of love tonight. Chance coming again, Seco from the high slot, Hexter save. Seco follows her miss and sends it wide. Seco tries again, knuckling shot goes wide. Bank back to Estes at the blue line. Up the boards it rolls. Pass intercepted by Northville. Estes kept it in, nice job. Hugging the boards, left side. Sully Estes shoots it high. Dragovich hoping for a hat trick. Seco couldn't get there. Out to neutral ice where Liggett will recycle quickly. Estes, pass, tipped by a couple of skates. Norfield tries to get it out, they can't. Been an issue all night. Reagan Johnson shook free of one and got it out to neutral ice. Estes poke checks it free. Tried to find a teammate on the left side. Nobody was home. This is an icing, but it does allow Liggett to change. In a 6-0 game, they haven't scored yet in the third. A couple of goals in the second and four goals in the first. Tom, they scored 22 seconds in with Ancona, and it's been off to the races ever since. Yeah, and it's kind of what we were expecting a little bit from that Liggett side, high intensity, high scoring, and Northville, a little bit more intensity from them was expected, but you can just tell from the physicality standpoint of things and just the talent level side of things that they're just a little bit outmatched. And I still like how they're playing right now. Down six goals, showing a lot of fight, and still trying to score goals as we're seeing right now. Could have been an opportunity, but it was taken away. Liggett coming ahead. Two on one. Pass in front, just missed Metri. Oh, boy. That was, that a was shot after right there. it again, Tom. Yeah. Man, they're trying to get her one desperately. Right back to Bella. Shot. Save. Hexter. Bella looking for goal number one this season. Northfield gets it to center ice just so they can breathe. Lee into the offensive zone. Moving left. Deliberated and passing it further along that wall. Shot by Metri was blocked. Bella follows it up and shoots it wide. Lee lost the puck. 
Banked around the boards and saved by Welsh. Moving in front. Beckhand save. Hexter and swept aside. Leggett Holden again. Back in front again. Hexter the save again. Wow. Welsh tried twice and Hexter made the save twice. And I know Liggett's up by six, but they got to be just a little bit frustrated that a lot of these shots aren't fine in the back of the net. Another great backhand wrestler right there, and Hexter is all over it. Uh, we've been, you know, harp on it, harping on it all day long, but we cannot stress enough the type of credit that uh, that young lady should get in goal right there for the Mustangs. Another face-off win for Liggett. Estes in that big slap shot. Oh, boy. Hexter looked behind her, but it was in her glove. I thought the same thing as, uh, as you right there, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that one. She really looked back like it went in right there. She made a great save again. Wobble and puck in front, still loose. And Dopke's shot went wide. Six minutes remaining in a senior night game. Trying to get the seniors a memory for Liggett. Estes, guarded by Johnson. Pass, big drive in, Kona goes wide. Out to center it comes. Dragovic for Ancona, blind back in, tipped off a couple of bodies, found by Liggett. This is Dopke shooting, and it was deflected wide. Dopke dumps it deep. Four siblings in that family who all played hockey. AC Dopke has been on this varsity team for a couple of years for Liggett. Seko, whose skating ability has been on display tonight. Estes center of the blue. Sully with the room. And a shot saved by Hexter. Rebound loose. Another save. Seko couldn't put it home. I'm excited to keep up with this Liggett team and how uh, they go on in their run for a yet fourth consecutive state title and their CYO chances that start tomorrow as well. Uh, they're going to be a lot of fun to kind of tune in on and figure out how they end up. There's a lot of teams that Liggett will see down the road, coaching staffs, players who will have sleepless nights getting prepared to play this team. A huge reason why, Tom, so many are – Frustrated with the prospect of playing Liggett, as we've talked about, it's not a one or two woman show. It's the depth on this team and the balanced attack which makes them so good. Yeah, I, I'm just quickly scanning up and down my sheet right now. I'm counting eight or nine different girls with ten or more points. And when you have that type of, I guess, offensive production that's spread out through your entire team, it makes it so hard to game plan for because usually as a head coach or a couple players, they're going to scout and look at one or two players, hey, that Quinlan, that Ancona, they're really great. But then you have to worry about all five or six other girls that are going to be able to put that puck in, find themselves in a nice spot for an assist as well. Another save by Hexter. Stella Smyataz took the shot. Over 50 shots by Leggett tonight. It has been a workout for Hexter in between the pipes. Northville sweeps it down the ice. They will wave off the icing here. As Metri's back to get it, coming up on four minutes remaining. Over the red line, Liggett comes. Taken away by Northville, Kylie Marks. Nice job taking it away. Said Kylie's name a few times tonight for Northville. Buck loose in the corner. Flopped free to space. Striding ahead, Smyataz. Shot, Hexter save. Northfield throws it down the ice. That's going to end up being an icing, but the frustration from Lily Connor. I think she thought a teammate was going to be on the other end of that, but it does allow Northfield to change. Yeah, she knew it as soon as she threw that puck up right there. And with limited time left to go, Northfield's got a few more chances to try to get down there and put something in the back of the net, but 
it's been all Liggett so far, and can you blame them? I mean, just their, their, their talent level. I mean, they come to play today, and why wouldn't you on senior night, too? You want to play your best hockey. Alcala shot blocked. Norfolk's done a really nice job tonight blocking a bunch of shots. Here's Johnston. Reagan Johnson with the 20 goals this year for Northville. Walking into the offensive zone. There's a shot that goes wide. One of the better opportunities tonight for Northville. Brooklyn Peschel at times has been sitting there for Liggett, watching her team on the other end do a lot of good work offensively. We'll see if Northville gets another crack at Liggett here with under three to go. And that's why she's only got 11 goals allowed in nine games this year. And ma make it 10 right now. Up the boards and all the way down the ice. That's an icing. Johnson coming off for Northville. I know we've talked a lot about the great players for Liggett, but Greg and Johnson deserve some love. 20 goals this season. Great softball player committed to go to Northwood. Would you believe that Reagan actually scored five goals in a game against Troy United back on December 6th? I know this is going to end up being a frustrating night, Tom, for Northville girls hockey. A lot of frustrating nights when you play Liggett, but Reagan Johnson, number 24, deserves a lot of praise. And We've talked a lot about the netminder, Hexter, tonight, but let, let's give some love to this Northville girls team. It's never easy playing such a good team. You know what you're facing when you walk into the ring. Oh, yeah. And I think these girls have battled the heart all night, no question. 100%. It should not be 6-0 to zero right now, by the way Liggett's playing. It should be a dozen, but Northville has hung in there. They've played extremely well defensively. As Evan, we talked about, those first two or three shots were high-level shots. Tough to be able to, to save at all. But the defense has been playing well. It's just tough for their forwards to be able to move the puck out of their zone. Everything else has been solid, though, from Northwood. Or, sorry, from Northville, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Reagan <laughs> Johnson's going to Northwood. That's why I was in your brain. You're good. Dopke drops it back for Liggett. Trying to get Metri a goal on her senior night. She just had the puck and lost it. They pass it in front and get a goal for L. Quinlan. Elle a little sheepish after she scored. Didn't get all she wanted to on it, but Sophie and Kona will dab for her. Seven nothing. They've been doing that a little bit tonight. A few dabs, you know, it's a little outdated, but we love it. Look at Elle Quinlan, just in the right spot at the right time. Cross ice feed right in front of the crease right there and just flips it on in past the pad. Well done. 12th. Ninth goal of the season for Quinlan, her 20th point. L's fourth season on varsity hockey, and she does get a goal on the night where they celebrate all those outstanding seniors. Nearly went in, nearly the eighth of the night, did not get by Hexter. Out to center, and handled by Sophie Ancona. Ancona with three, Dragovich with two, Welsh with one, and L Quinlan with the last goal for Liggett. Do they have one more in the dying moments? Dopke, slut shot high over the crossbar. And Kona's got it and dropping it back. Point shot blocked. It's someone shin pad. Body bumping in the corner under a minute to go. Sully Estes and that big slap shot hits in. She's taken that slapper at least eight different times tonight. Into the back of the net. Goal number nine this year for Sully. It was bound to go in. I mean, she, as you said, she'd been hammering that same exact shot from the top of that left circle. How about that? That was a pinball from the right top corner all the way around to the left. We're going to keep playing hockey right now. What a shot from Estes right there. And we can't stress enough how much talent there is across so many different ladies on this team. Very, very impressed. So now Sully Estes has points in 13 of the 18 games she's played this year. Two-sport player also plays on the soccer team at Liggett. She has been unleashing that slapper all night. And finally, 
One found its way into the back of the net. Oh, it slipped through. Dopke shot, got by Hexter, and you can see now Northville, the cast take is empty, and you can't blame Hexter. That's goal number nine for Liggett. Dopke's fourth of the year, and that should just about do it. It's tough to end out that way, but that can't take away from how hard Northville did play. And check out Northville right now congratulating their, their tender, Hex, Hexter. And that's big. She played really well. And I know she didn't allow in eight, nine goals. But you know, when you're taking on a team like Liggett, it's hard to avoid. The focus of the night is the focus of the girls' high school hockey world in Michigan the last few years. University Liggett is remarkable. Three straight state championships could be on their way to a fourth. Another win on senior night over Northville. And we're back to wrap it up in just a little bit. From an ordinary idea comes a great journey. It all starts with the simple thought, a vision of something bigger, greater than what already exists. It's that spark that ignites the passion and drive to create something truly amazing. At G-Brand, we understand this journey well. We take pride in the details and perfecting every aspect of the process, regardless of how small or big they may be because it's more than just a design or a shirt. It's about outfitting future champions. There's something to be said about a team coming together, each member contributing their unique skills, talents, and ideas. It's that collective effort that takes a simple idea and turns it into something truly great. The process can be excruciating, with countless hours spent tirelessly reviewing every detail. But the end result, is pure and so rewarding, knowing that we've created something that will inspire greatness in those who wear it. Whether they come from a savage land or a booming metropolis, whether their numbers are two or two billion, the greatest their numbers could ever become is truly to become one. That's why at G-Brand, we're more than just a clothing company. We're a movement a community of like-minded individuals who believe in the power of coming together to make a difference. So join us on this journey as we strive to outfit future champions and inspire greatness in all that we do. G-Brand. Now that's game. Huron Valley Athletic Complex, where dreams, passion, and hard work create success. Hi, my name is Dan Samini. I am the Admissions Outreach Coordinator here at University of Liggett School. I have been at Liggett for 22 years, 20 as a teacher, 20 as a football coach. This is my 19th year as the head baseball coach. We have a tradition of excellence in the classroom. That tradition doesn't stop at three o'clock. It comes out here on the fields, in the gyms, in the auditoriums. Every student from pre-K until 12th grade is asked to challenge themselves, take risks, think outside the box. There is something here for everyone at University of Liggett School. Starting in the lower school, we have clinics run by our coaches at the upper school. We have a great middle school athletic program. We have 20 clubs at the high school level. We have state-of-the-art athletic facilities, starting with the Bowl Center, Fruhoff Gymnasium, we have the McCann Ice Rink, and we have eight multi-purpose turf fields across our beautiful campus. We just won a world championship in robotics, and in the history of University of Liggett School Athletics, we have won 85 state championships and numerous individual state championships. 
Come sing in a musical. Come play on a team. Come be a team manager. Come win a state championship. Come be a part of something great here at University of Liggett School. Please contact me or a member of our outstanding admissions team to set up a tour and apply today. Go Knights! Thanks again to Cloverleaf Pizza at 17834 Mack Avenue in Gross Point for giving our crew some delicious pizza for dinner tonight. Make sure to stop in at Cloverleaf and get your own original Motor City Square pizza right now. It's the best Detroit-style pizza around since 1946. This hockey program at University of Liggett at the high school level on the girls' side is the best around. They've won three straight state titles, and a big reason why they may win a fourth, the senior who scored a hat trick on senior night, Sophie Ancona, standing by with Tom Cavanaugh. Thanks a lot, Evan. We are here with Sophie Ancona, senior G Brand USA player of the game. Sophie, you were awesome today. I mean, you guys won 9 0, a domination over Northville. Tell me about kind of your play this year. You got almost 50 points, and how you played today. Three goals, you had to be feeling good. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess I couldn't have done it without my team. Uh, they've always been there to support me um, and to make me the best player that I can be. Uh, as far as the goals go, I think I just worked really hard in practice um, all year leading up to it, and I think that like right now is the time where I finally got it together, and you know, I'm trying to push for this win at the end. Stay tuned. Perfect answer right there. Uh, you talk about, you know, peaking at the right time and finding uh, you know the right groove before heading into Catholic League playoffs state finals you guys are cruising right now I mean obviously 16-0-2 great great record but w what goes on right now in your guys's mind as a team when you're heading into these hard playoff games going for another state title yeah um, our philosophy is definitely like family being there for each other helping each other grow be positive all that stuff and I think that's what separates us from the other teams in the league is just us being there together and being a family and helping each other grow. Now going down the road, I mean, you guys, a quick turnaround tomorrow. You guys take on St. Mary's. Just give me your first initial thoughts going into that one. Um, I think I think we have it. Uh, uh, we, we've been working really hard in practice, uh, and I think that our mentality right now isn't that we're going to win. It's that we want to win, and we're going to give it our all to win. And so I think that's that's what's going to happen. I love that right there. Senior night tonight. What did it mean to be able to, you know, share the ice with the other seven girls and be able to, you know, be here at uh, McCann Arena for one last game? Um, it was awesome. Uh, it, sometimes you wake up and you don't even realize you're a senior. It goes by super fast. Yep. So right now it kind of hit a little hard that I'm not going to be playing with these girls much longer. And I think it really helped having our uh, co-captain, Allie Roth, on the bench, even though she couldn't play because she's hurt. Um, she just really pushes us forward, and having her on the bench today was really awesome, and we scored some goals for her. You guys certainly did. Eight total goals, three from this one. Sophie Ancona was awesome today, our G-Brand USA player of the game. In an 8 nothing victory over Northville, we will see you tomorrow taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the CYO playoffs. Sophie, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good rest of the time. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'm not sure who cares better there, Tom's or Sophie. We'll deliberate that at another time. Congratulations to the University of Liggett women on another win. They've won three straight state championships. They haven't lost in four years. Going for a four straight state championship, and if they win the whole darn thing, Sophie and Kona, probably going to be a big reason why. Thanks for joining us tonight as we got to celebrate one of the best high school sports programs, regardless of sport, regardless of gender, regardless of class in our entire great state. And we've got more fun hockey for you tomorrow on the prep. It's a special day, pink in the rink day. St. Mary's playing Brother Rice all day long, and we'll have all the games for you starting at 3 o'clock, all the way up through the big varsity game against Brother Rice right around 7.30. For Tom Cavanaugh, and our entire team behind the scenes, led by our fearless leader, Alex Westfall. Evan Stockton saying thanks for joining us on a Friday night. University League at Girls Hockey, pay attention, they're amazing. We'll talk to you tomorrow from St. Mary's.